Peggy 16. Endgame is the final piece of Battlefield 3 downloadable content. I spoke to lead designer at DICE, Nicholas Vagreus, about everything it has to offer. Nicholas, Endgame is finally here. We've seen the motorbikes in the trailer. What's in store for us that's different to other modes we've played in Battlefield before? Well, now we're going all in with speed. It's speed and agility. It's the, it's the theme of this pack. So Endgame is really about the adrenaline that comes with high speed you know, combat and chases. And the motorbike is, of course, kind of the epitome of that, where you basically ride it and you have your friend on the back and you just go crazy fast over jumps and, and taking bases uh, super fast. So you've got four maps in this piece of DLC. What types of terrain are we going to be riding and running and flying around in? They are uh, themed uh, kind of around the different seasons. We have uh, the winter map, which is Sabalan Pipeline, uh, and then we have London Flats, which is a big kind of deserty, hot summer map. Uh, and then we have the kind of autumn map, which is Operation Riverside, and then Kiasar Railroad, which is a spring, lush, green type of forest map. So aesthetically, they look very different, but how do they play differently? When you, when you talk about speed, you need some actually some distance to, to cover, otherwise you, know, you won't get anywhere. So the maps in Endgame are quite big. Um, the, the exception to that would be uh, Sabalan Pipeline, which is a slightly smaller map. It's still vehicle friendly, but it has um, smaller um, areas to, um, or distances to cover, so it's, it's a little more catered to infantry combat. Traditionally, with a new piece of DLC comes new game modes as well. Have you got any in this new pack? We have two new game modes, actually. One is Capture the Flag, making a triumphant return since 1942. It's a really, you know, fast mode. And since it's such a, you know, battlefield twist to the mode, because it is a classic mode, it has been done several times before, but not in this way where you actually have vehicles par uh, as part of it and as an integral part of it. And the other is air superiority. And the reason why we picked those two modes is because they really cater to the speed and agility that comes with the pack. You know, you have this conquest style air superiority mode where you're supposed to you know, capture areas of the sky which are represented by these blimps uh, instead of flags, for example. And of course, a big 12 on 12 dogfight, you know, that's the most adrenaline and speed filled experience you can have. In terms of level design, have you put any fun things in for people on motorbikes to play around with? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, we've added you know, lots of kind of hidden, and some are very obvious, jumps that, can, you know, you can make some really big air jumps or some small, you can do big shortcuts like over um, uh, rocky terrain or something like that to reach the flag uh, bases faster. So there's lots of cool stuff to do for the people riding the bikes. And I guess some spectacular crashes happen as well. Indeed they do. Uh, fail a jump and you, you hit the pine tree and it's bye-bye. What's this about a dropship? This is basically rapid deployment idea, which means that if you control the central base, you control a dropship, which means that you can spawn inside an IFV, dropping out of the dropship onto the battlefield through parachute. So you can get a surprise kind of tank coming down from the sky to help your team, which is really cool. Now to counter the aerial threat, you've got some new aerial defenses in there as well, haven't you? Yes. We have two new Jeeps with an AA turret on the back. So they provide very mobile, very fast anti-air support, which is really, really nice because normally you might have to rely on either static AA or infantry, which doesn't have the strongest AA. But now you have this very mobile platform to take down air threats, which is really nice. Now, Nicholas, we're here at DICE. We've come all this way. It wouldn't be a worthwhile trip without a little bit of insider information. Do you have any tips for us for Endgame about how to, how to get the edge over the opponents? Oh, a tip. Uh, let's see. Um, I have one thing. Um, this, is, this is pretty hard to pull off, but if you pull it off, it's awesome. Uh, it's basically, if you have a friend on the motorbike and you jump onto the back, that means that you can use your own weapons. You, you don't, you're not tied to a specific vehicle weapon. So what I like to do is to actually equip some C4. And then, as you come up to some of the jumps that go over roads and over crossings, if you time it right and there's a tank passing by, you can actually go over the tank, drop some C4, and as you land next to it, go click. And that's that what is I, pretty epic. That's what I call a, a battlefield moment. Yes, indeed it is. Well, Nicholas, obviously Endgame is the last piece of DLC, and you've been with us since the very start. So thank you very much for your time at talking us through not only Battlefield 3, but all the iterations uh, of the DLC that have come since then. And uh, I look forward to playing Endgame. Thank you. Always a pleasure.